My name is Eric Bogatin. I'm a signal integrity evangelist. Uh, I've got my own company, uh, Bogatin Enterprises. Our web presence is bethesignal.com. I look at the world of power integrity today, kind of where signal integrity was 10 years ago, in the sense that um, uh, signal integrity 10 years ago was um, uh, becoming important, it was growing in concern, and most engineers were kind of low on the learning curve, uh, and it has taken these 10 years for signal integrity to become a really established engineering field with a lot of experts and a lot of formal techniques and methodologies uh, available. When we talk about power integrity, I like to think that there are kind of three roles that the power integrity encompasses based on what the interconnects that provide that power distribution do. Uh, the first, the primary role, is providing the DC supply current to the, the devices. That's providing a, a low noise uh, uh, power rail to the devices, all the different power rails. So that's primary role number one. But those same interconnects that transport the DC power supply to the devices are also used typically to uh, carry the return currents for signal lines. And so managing the return paths for the signal lines is also a critically important role for those same interconnects. And the third is, if you look at sources of EMI, what we find is that one of the dominant ways for a product to fail a certification test, like FCC or CISPR or one of the other tests, is due to excess noise in the power distribution interconnects, whether radiating directly from the, the planes that make up the product or coupling into the uh, external cables uh, that are connected to the ground planes in the board. And so noise in the power distribution path is a dominant source of radiated emissions and failing certification tests. In power integrity, you know, there are two classes of problems that engineers try to deal with. On the one hand, there's the extreme tech where you're pushing performance, and the other hand, there is balancing performance and cost. The design approach in both of those is really basically the same. You want to always start with a design that's going to get you to the right answer and acceptable design as early in the design process as possible. You want to take advantage of rules of thumb and approximations to give you design guidelines and, and approaches to take. But fundamentally, when you're trying to shave uh, pennies off a design or trying to get to the last tenth of a million in the design, the accuracy, the ability to predict the behavior of the, of the complicated real-world 3D system is really important. You want to apply those analysis tools, rules of thumb, approximations, numerical simulation tools, as early in the design process as you can in order to have confidence the design is going to work without more margin than you're willing to pay for. And balancing cost performance trade-offs is really hard, and I think that's a significant challenge right now today. When you're trying to minimize the margin in your product to reduce the cost, so you're not paying extra for margin, the more accurate you can do the analysis and the higher the confidence level you have that the product is going to work, it means that you're going to meet your performance targets, you're going to have the lowest cost product, and you can find and eliminate those problems early in the design cycle so you won't spin designs and you'll save development time and decrease the time to market. In addition to the extreme tech examples that are pushing the envelopes of just how to engineer the higher performance, there's also the rest of the design world, which is you're not pushing performance, but you're pushing cost performance. And it's all about how globally competitive we are. If there is a lower cost solution for your design, someone around the world is going to find it. And if it's not you, that means someone else is going to get your business. And that means that not only, even if it's a low performance design, you have to find the lowest cost way of implementing that. And that's where the most efficient way of evaluating the lowest cost and evaluating the, the bang for the buck performance is by using simulation. Uh, and it's by using analysis tools that include the th real, real world 3D effects of irregular plane shapes, spreading inductance in the planes, the mounting traces of the capacitors, including all the constraints of the rest of the design. It's by including all of those factors in a numerical simulation tool that will let you have an accurate prediction of what the performance is that you can use to balance cost per performance trade-offs. I've used hyperlinks uh, since uh, uh, the early days of hyperlinks, and partly because it is the easiest tool to use out there. The kind of work that I do in creating uh, content and, and training materials, I don't often 
uh, use the tool on a continuous basis. And so when I let go of it and then pick it up again a few weeks later, the learning curve is all of seconds to minutes. It's an incredibly easy tool to use. W one of the great features of hyperlinks that I take advantage of, in addition to being really easy to use, is the visual appearance of the outputs. For the power integrity simulation, you can look at the impedance profiles, uh, both the single port as well as multi-port, to look at what the chip is going to see looking into the power distribution plane. And that is critically important when you want to sculpt the impedance profile to see what that impedance looks like. In order to look at the uh, current flows dynamically in the planes from different sources, you can get an intuitive feel looking at the transient response, what that current is doing as it's spreading out into the planes to look at uh, to tr transport to different locations, look at the impact of different chips, look at the impact of odd shapes in the, in the planes. The combination of ease of use and visual appearance of the output really ties into your intuition very quickly, and I find it to be a very powerful learning tool to understand the dynamics of how interconnect design influences signal integrity and power integrity performance.